Income Tax 2023-2024 American Opportunity Credit Who is an eligible student? Get ready and some coffee because to be a great tax preparer you gotta be like a scarecrow outstanding in your field unmoved, stoic even as the crows try to peck your eyes out Most First, a word from our sponsor Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. This information can be found in Publication 970 Tax Benefits for Education, Tax Year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. We're at the bottom part of the income tax formula where the credits live. Remember in the first half of the income tax formula, basically a funny income statement ending not with net income, but rather taxable income, taxable income, therefore basically being the bottom line of the income statement part of the income tax formula. But it's only half the battle, half the story. We've got the second half of the formula taking that taxable income, calculating the tax based on it, not using a flat tax, mind you, but a progressive tax system to get to the tax before credits and other taxes then we're going to have the other taxes which could include things like self-employment tax if you have a sole proprietorship schedule c type of business for example and we have the credits the credits are similar to the deductions in that they're both good for taxes typically but if you had a dollar deduction it would only decrease the income statement part of the formula taxable income the benefit being dependent upon the tax rate that you are in only getting a part of that dollar for benefit but if you got a credit if it's an above the line credit which i'm calling here an above the line credit or a non-refundable credit as long as you have liability to consume it you might get the whole dollar's worth of credit as a benefit which would get us to the to the total tax then we apply the payments that have been made such as withholdings on the w-2 income estimated tax payments and the refundable credits refundable credits possibly being able to take even if the tax liability goes below zero resulting in the tax code being used not as a tax system in that case but as a way to implement a welfare benefit or social safety net type of program that finally leading us to the tax refund or tax due we're looking at those education credits and usually the financial institution we're dealing with would have to issue us a 1098t which would at least give us the starting point the indication that we might have a deduction type of situation the amount that we include as part of our calculation and which credit or deduction to take may still vary but this will give us an indication that we might have a tax benefit related to the education so then we have the form 8863 this is the education credit we're primarily looking at the american op the american opportunity and lifetime learning credits usually thinking of them in that order in other words if i get the 1098t i'm thinking usually credits in order of first i want the american opportunity credit because it's better more beneficial lowers my taxes more and then if i can't get it the lifetime learning credit and if i can't get that then maybe if there's another way i can get a deduction for it i can look into that this is schedule three additional credits and uh, payments part number one non-refundable credits where typically this is going to flow into line three education credits from form 8863 this is the non-refundable uh, part of those items this is page two of the form 1040 in the tax and credits section we have that flowing through to line 20 amount from schedule three line eight and if you have a refundable component of the american opportunity to the yeah, american opportunity credit that goes directly to line 29 for for the american opportunity credit from form 8863 okay 
who is an eligible student? So we've been talking about basically the credit and, and uh, what kind of expenses would be able to be included and then the calculation of the credit and so on and so forth. And it got quite complex. Now, however, we're going to go down to the, to the question of who's an eligible student. That's going to be important. So to claim the American Opportunity Credit, the student for whom you pay qualified education expenses must be an eligible student. This is a student who meets all the following requirements. So what are they? Now, again, you would assume that if you've got like the Form 1098-T, that generally you would assume because that's going to a qualified institution and the student must have qualified to be able to enroll in the institution. So that's a fairly good instication that they're going to be a, a qualified student but we want to know the general concept of what it means to be a qualified student. All right. So the student didn't have expenses that were used to figure an American opportunity credit in any four earlier years. So we talked about this as one of the requirements for any particular student. They, they couldn't have already claimed the American opportunity credit for four earlier years for that particular student, that same social security number, even if that student was claiming it on we saw examples of them claiming it on the parent tax return for that student and then transferring to their own tax return. It's for the same student, even though being claimed on two different tax returns, for example, it's still that four year uh, requirement. So the student hadn't completed the first four years of post-secondary education, generally freshman, sophomore, junior, senior years of college. We once again have seen that these two things, although they look similar, are different because this first one talks about having four years of being able to take the credit for a particular in student in total versus this one telling us four years with regards to the normal process of going school if you did it like freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year. But in practice, these labels, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year are more dependent on the institution based on the number of credits that have been completed typically rather than the number of years so although we assume or think of four years of college going freshman sophomore junior senior it might not go that way for many people depending on what their circumstances are so for at least one academic period beginning in 2023 or the first uh, three months of 2024 in the qualified expenses were paid in 2023. The student was enrolled at least half time. So we have a half time requirement for the enrollment, more restrictive requirement possibly than the lifetime learning credit uh, in a program leading to, and it has to lead to a decree, certificate, or other recognized educational credentials. So if you're just taking, you know, bowling or something like that i think i think a lot of the stuff that still seems like it's not the most useful type of thing still apply to a degree certificate or whatnot but you can probably get more guidance from the institution as to whether the program that you're enrolled in is going towards those particular things so the student uh, hasn't been convicted of any federal or state felony for possession of distributing a controlled substance as of the end of 2023. So more and more, many of these financial institutions the the, the, the lead to the, the most high paying job are the people that basically sell drugs on the, on the campuses, right? But obviously, uh, so that's kind of linked. That's why they kind of linked that here and said, hey, we got to stop this. Uh, and so they kind of linked that to the education expenses. You can't be, have the felony conviction for the American Opportunity Credit but possibly that's not linked to the lifetime learning credit. So completion of first four years. So a student has completed the first four years of post-secondary education if the institution at which the student is enrolled awards the student four years of academic credit at that institution for coursework completed by the student before 2023. So again, this is the one that applies not to just four years that you have claimed the credit, but we're talking here that the financial institution is applying to you the four years of completion based on the credits that they have calculated. So this uh, student generally wouldn't be an eligible student for the purposes of the American Opportunity Credit, but perhaps the Lifetime Learning Credit in that situation. Exception though, any academic credit awarded solely on the basis of the student's performance on proficiency examinations and, and uh, disregarded in determining whether the student has completed four years of post-secondary education. So in other words, if they went into the school 
and the school just gave them credit for whatever freshman or sophomore year based on their academic prowess they just took a, an exam and they're super smart then we don't really want to discourage those people we actually the, the point i just want to go back to this for a second here the point of educating people from and paying tax dollars to do it which is what is basically happening when we're subsidizing these schools is that we're trying to get the positive externality of smart people in the community making stuff benefiting not only them but other people so obviously we don't want to be discouraging the the people from doing too well right if they if they don't if they come in and they're super smart and they get credits because they're super smart then that's good and we and so they don't want to take away you know the benefit for for that situation so that's why you end up with these kind of exceptions in that situation enrolled at least half time so a student has enrolled at least half time uh, if the student was taking at least half the normal full-time workload for their course of study this again is complicated because schools are different these days we don't have just one cookie cutter model for an institution because we're not like communists right there is no one D different institutions might structure their schools differently and that could be beneficial and the market is the thing that should determine which type of structure an institution is best and some of these rules such as these kind of requirements for the credits lock institutions in to not being able to experiment with with different structures and compete on a competitive marketplace which leads to more efficiency so so that so we have a little bit more deviation that has happened which leads to us being dependent on the school to kind of say okay what is the equivalent of full-time service so that we can comply with whatever the requirements are what does it mean to be half time so that means that you're gonna have to talk to your institution because you might be on semester hours quarter hours or some kind of other structure especially if it's like a vocational type of school uh, rather than, a, than, than than like a traditional undergraduate situation. All right, the student for which for what is half of the normal full-time workload is determined by each eligible educational institution. However, the standard may not be lower than any of those established by the U.S. Department of Education under the Higher Ed Education Act of 1965. So you can see here that even if the school wasn't taking money directly from the government, even if the students weren't getting government loans, which basically fund many of the not-for-profit schools, the, the schools still have kind of a stranglehold over the structure of the entity based on the students wanting to take credits, right? Education credits, which again are gonna be struck, which means the schools need to be structured in certain ways in order to easily facilitate the calculation of the credits and so on and so forth. I so I'm just pointing these out because this kind of stuff, this kind of bureau bureaucracy, you might think isn't is kind of benign, not a big deal, but it has a big <laughs> impact on inst on institutions and how the institutions run and different formats of running institutions and experimenting with different formats is how people deal with changes in say technology and advancements, you know, across time which could be limited by too much bureaucracy that's my rant here my rant for this presentation example one so we have uh mac graduated from high school in june 2022 in september mac enrolled is he big mac or just mac he's big mac in september mac enrolled in an undergraduate degree program at college u and attended full-time for both 2022 fall and 2023 th spring semester. For the 2023 fall semester, Mac was enrolled less than half time. Because Mac was enrolled in an undergraduate degree program on at least a half-time basis for at least one academic period that began in 2022 and at least one academic period that began in 2023 mac is an eligible student for tax years 2022 and 2023 including the 2023 fall semester when mac enrolled at college u on less than a half-time basis okay example number two 
after taking classes at College V on part-time basis for a few years, Shelly became full-time student for the 2023 spring semester. So College V classified Shelly as a second semester senior, fourth year. So the school is now is now telling her she was half time, so she's not going to complete the entire four years in four years because that's what would happen basically if you were doing it on a full time basis typically. So that means that when you look at the calculation of whether or not you are have completed the four years of academic credits, it will be dependent on credits, not on time as to whether you're freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, for example. So College V classified Shelley as a second semester senior, fourth year for 2023 spring semester, and has a first semester graduate student, uh, fifth year for the 2023 fall semester. So because College V didn't classify Shelley as having completed the first four years of post-secondary education as of the beginning of 2023, Shelley is an eligible student for tax year 2023. Therefore, the qualified education expenses paid for the 2023 spring semester and the 2023 fall semester are taken into account and in figuring the American Opportunity Credit for 2023. Another example. During 2024 fall semester, Larry was a high school student who took classes on a halftime basis at College X. Larry's a go-getter. Larry's doing it, man. He's looking to the future. So Larry wasn't enrolled as part-time of a degree program at College X because College X only admits students to a degree program if they have a high school diploma or equivalent. Larry's like, come on, man, I'm smarter than 90% of the people that in this place. Give me, cut me some slack, man. I'm going for it here. And then because Larry wasn't enrolled in a degree program at College X during 2022, Larry wasn't an eligible student for tax year 2022. Tough luck, Larry. Example number four, the facts are the same as in example three. During the 2023 spring semester, Larry again attended College X but not as part of a degree program. Larry graduated from high school in June 2023. Okay, so now he's a graduate, he's doing it like the normal way. You, you do high school and then college for slackers, I guess. Sorry, I'm just kidding. I didn't go, I didn't do two things. Anyway, so for the 2023 fall semester, Larry enrolled as a full time student, College X, as part of a degree program, and College X awarded Larry credit for the prior coursework at College X. Because Larry was enrolled in a degree part program at College X for 2023 full term on at least half time basis, Larry is an eligible student for all tax year for 2023. Therefore, the qualified education expenses paid for classes taken in College X during both the 2023 spring semester during which Larry wasn't enrolled in a degree program and the 2023 fall semester are taken into account in figuring any American Opportunity Credit. That's, that's better. Example number five, let's do another one. D graduated from high school in June 2023 to in January of 2023 D enrolled in a one-year post-secondary certificate program on a full-time basis to obtain a certificate as a travel agent. So that seems much more practical sometimes than some of these, uh, some of the college degrees, frankly, sadly, uh, to say. So, so she's probably travel agent. That's that's a good one. She wants to be traveling the world, possibly. And here we go. So what she gonna So D completed the program in December 2023 and was awarded a certificate. So in January 2024, D enrolled in a one-year post-secondary certificate program uh, on a full-time basis to obtain a certificate as a computer programmer. Oh, she's leveling up now, programmer and travel agent. Is that what we're... So D is an eligible student for both tax years 2023 and 2024 because the degree requirement the the workload requirement and the year of study requirement for those years have been met all right here's our flow chart just to look at it in flow chart format 
So who is an eligible student for the American Opportunity Credit? This chart is, is provided to help you quickly decide whether a student is eligible for the American Opportunity Credit. Remember, if they're not required or eligible for the American Opportunity Credit, they might still be eligible for the Lifetime Learning Credit. So here we have it. Did the student complete the first four years of post-secondary education before the beginning of the tax year? So if yes, then student doesn't qualify because they've already done their four-year post-secondary situation determined by the institution. But if no, was the American Opportunity Credit claimed in at least four years prior uh, for prior tax years for the student? These two are not the same because the second one isn't dependent on the school credits, freshman, sophomore, senior, I skipped one or something, but rather just did you already claim the credit for four prior years and so once again if yes student isn't eligible so we're going to say no and continue was the student enrolled at least half time in a program leading to a degree certificate or other recognized educational credential for at least one academic period beginning during 2023 or the first three months of 2024 if the student uh, expenses were paid in 2023 so they have that requirement of half-time student and what were they what were they taking uh, for their program because hopefully it is something remember the the idea here of the credit is the students going to take something that's actually useful to people right because the reason we're subsidizing the institutions with our taxpayer dollars is because the smart people are supposed to come out and work on stuff and when they do stuff, they get rich, and that's cool as long as they basically have positive externalities for the rest of us because the stuff they make is the stuff that we want. And if they take stupid stuff at school that doesn't help any of us with positive externalities because they don't make anything productive after they finish the school, it's pointless to be subsidizing this. Okay, I'm getting another rant. I already had my rant for this video. Anyways, if we say yes... So is the student free of any federal or state felony conviction for, for, for processing or distributing a controlled substance? So they can't be a controlled substance distributing felon, of which there, there are, I, I'm sure, plenty of on the college uh, campuses, which is somewhat disturbing. That's, that's the biggest career path that the current college institutions seem to be forging. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm just kidding. There's any <laughs> case. So if all those are good to go, the student is an eligible student. 